class. Now we're gonna put this as a revision video for what we covered in your chapter one. Now we just do a quick checklist of what we've gone through and you just ask yourself whether you recall things like this. Now what we studied in the first chapter is we discussed the theories behind why do we need financial statement audit and you probably must recall agency information hypothesis insurance hypothesis and of course the main one has to be agency with the main thing pops up in your mind you must know what is fiduciary duty and then why do we need auditing so what the shareholders needed would be assurance okay now then by going through the theories behind auditing we actually define the meaning of the word financial statement audit and when we go through that meaning of financial statement audit we actually discuss a few of the key jargon like what do you mean by financial statement the word opinion what is true and fair what is material and the meaning of reporting framework okay so these are the key concepts i've discussed with you in the class and then we moved on to look at the meaning of assurance and non-assurance engagement so you probably must recall that when you call something as assurance what are the elements that we have in it and then we gave you some example to tell you about audit review as well as examination of prospective financial information so these are example of what we call assurance engagement and when we go through non-assurance we give example like compilation work compilation of financial information as well as agreed upon procedures so the important issue is you must be able to recall that what we've discussed what is all these things all right so i just run through a bit so we use this as a revision now so if you see the objective of an audit so based on what the standard says we need to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement okay so with that reasonable assurance you can then express an opinion whether financial statements are prepared in all material respects according to your framework now so all those keywords that we've discussed in the class like what do you mean by opinion what is material and what fall into financial statement reporting framework now it must all pops up in your mind so again if you do not recall please refer to the note okay now then what do you mean by reasonable assurance now that's a very very important concept that we have here now because when we do an assurance engagement what we're giving user is some kind of confidence so the level of assurance actually refers to level of confidence that we're giving to user so the confident users can have over credibility of information so how do you measure the level of assurance that we measure it into two level one is reasonable and one is moderate or we call it as limited or you call this as positive so what is reasonable or what is positive 
not reasonable if you look at that standard it's actually a high level of assurance but not absolute that means you just have high level of confidence but we will not be able to guarantee uh, that's called reasonable assurance okay now so just recall back on this particular example we say now in financial statement audit and in financial statement review these are both example of assurance engagement now, but the main difference of course besides the amount of work we do is the level of assurance so we say that audit provides user reasonable assurance review is limited now see the main reason why review is limited is because the amount of work that we do in review is always much lesser than the work we do in audit so there will always be less work than in an audit so if you're going to do something less than an audit then naturally the level of assurance you acquire here will have to be less than the assurance in audit so if audit is reasonable then you can't have more than that when it comes to a review so why does audit give us a reasonable assurance that's what we're trying to ask that is it possible is it possible that audit can be absolute now all of us know that the answer is no we, we can't guarantee our audit opinion now we know that it's a no but the reason is why so why can't the auditor guarantee his audit opinion now we call this as the inherent limitation of an audit so what falls into the inherent limitations of an audit? Now we just run through again the main points. See the inherent limitations of an audit will be the reason why we are not able to give absolute assurance. Now that's why the standard recognizes that auditor is not expected to at the same time we can't reduce audit risk to zero so if you can't reduce audit risk to zero then you can't guarantee because again remember what you mean by audit risk the risk of expressing an inappropriate opinion dot, dot, dot. okay now so this the risk of expressing an inappropriate opinion so if you reduce audit risk to zero effectively you're saying you guarantee your opinion uh, and we can't okay we can't so we can't reduce audit risk to zero now the reason is because we have an inherent limitations of audit and that inherent limitation is mainly because all these conclusions and opinion that we've drawn it's persuasive rather than conclusive and they are mainly due to three of the main headings here now so you must remember this as the heading okay so when you write the answer in the exam these three headings should appear so it's nature of financial reporting nature of audit procedure and the need for audit to be conducted within reasonable periods of time and reasonable cost right the first point about nature of financial reporting so what you're going to tell here is that you know in account there are many subjective matters uncertainties and this will bring to many different acceptable interpretations now if you recall what we gave example in the class i gave your example about contingent liability so if you have a litigation and you know that if someone is suing your client a litigation you notice that we can have at least uh, three different possibilities on how to treat this you can ignore it 
if you think that the chance of this materializing or you lose is remote or if you think that it's just possible so you just need to disclose and if you know that it's probable then you have to make a provision see there are three different ways of treating and it's all depending on how you estimate the outcome of the litigation so this is the problems that we're having in accounts and there is nothing auditor can do to eliminate this variation so there's nothing in the audit that we can do so that we can cancel out all these possibilities so this is the reason number one why we cannot guarantee now then number two when we do the audit we will actually have a practical limitation as well as legal limitation that we face in the work that we do so practically we know that we can't be sure if our audit client has fully disclosed the relevant information for us so we can't be sure that if they have disclosed everything understand that? okay now e even if you sure or you suspect that they are hiding things from us we have another problem on the legal limitation that we do not have a legal power to resolve the matter for example you cannot search the building okay right that's on the nature of the procedure that we have this kind of limitation that we can't be sure that if everything we've got is complete and if you're not even sure if it's complete how can you guarantee agree okay now the third issue is we know that in audit we have a time and a cost constraint so the time and cost constraint constraint that we face has forced the auditor to go for risk based auditing that we will not really be checking everything in the financial statement and we're going to use risk assessment and we will focus on what we believe that the risk of material misstatements are higher so if that's the case there will always be a possibility that there will be other parts that we've ignored but they might contain material misstatement and we are not aware of it and we fail to detect that so this is the third reason why we have our limitation so please remember these three key points okay and then elaboration okay right so we move on to one last area just to finish off our revision of the first class now we have this thing on the assurance engagement now if you recall that the purpose of assurance is actually to enhance confidence of the user and this came up before in the exam that you should be able to explain the five element of an assurance engagement so what's the five element now if you if you see the definition given here now they say an assurance engagement is in which a practitioner expresses a conclusion designed to enhance the degree of confidence of the user other than the responsible party about the outcome or evaluation or measurement of a subject matter against criteria now the outcome of the evaluation or measurement is the information the results from applying the criteria and we have two types of assurance that we give to user one is reasonable one is limited now so the five elements that we have will include the first element is what we call as the three party relationship you must have a practitioner practitioner oops, sorry practitioner which is professional accountant user and the responsible party so that's the first element 
Now then you will need to evaluate the subject which is the second element. Now the evaluation of the subject is based against suitable criteria and at the end there will be a conclusion which is the written assurance report and what's the fifth element now we can call the fifth element which you can't see here in the paragraph as the engagement process right so an easier way to explain this is to give an example so we can just take audit now in audit we see that the three-party relationship exists by having an auditor shareholder as well as directors so that will be the three-party relationship and obviously you should be aware that subject matter will be the financial statement that we are evaluating of course when you evaluate financial statement to know whether that financial statements give true and fair view the evaluation criteria is based on the applicable reporting framework example we're looking at IFRIS so it's going to based on whether you comply with the standard that's how you evaluate misstatements okay and then number four the conclusion is obviously the auditor's report which carries the audit opinion and what's the engagement process? Now, the process refers to the approach that we've used to co collect evidence to come to the conclusion. So what we're having over here is the use of a defined approach, which is based on the auditing framework. So in this case, I'll give an example using ISA. So that defined approach that we are using to collect sufficient, appropriate audit evidence in order that we can arrive at the conclusion to express our audit opinion. Right, that's the that five element. So remember the headings and you can use example from audit to explain this. Alright class, so that will be a short summary of all the key things that we cover in your first class, first chapter. Okay, so hope that in this short uh, less than 20 minutes video, you recall what you learned. Okay, remember the issue is to pass the exam, you must first have the knowledge, then the application. Okay, right. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.